In this barren lunar landscape outside Reykjavik lies a cutting edge experiment to combat climate change. So these are the fans. These huge fans sucking carbon dioxide directly from the air. It's called direct air capture. The CO2 is then mixed with water and pumped deep underground by the Icelandic company Carbfix. We are looking at one of our injection wells. The mixture ultimately injected into highly reactive basalt rocks. Before we inject the CO2, this is what it looked like. Very open, very porous. CO2 still has to fill up the holes. And then this is what it looks like after. So CO2 that was in the environment yesterday is in this pipe today. Tomorrow it'll be underground and in two years it'll be stone. Absolutely. From an invisible environmental threat in the air to a rock in the ground. Iceland is full of basalt, a porous rock made from cooling lava. Much of this country's breathtaking landscape, from the snow-capped mountains to the pebbles and its crystal clear streams, is made of basalt. When it's finished later this year, the orca plant will be able to remove 4,000 tons of CO2 each year, the equivalent of 2.2 million pounds of coal burned, about 11 rail cars full of coal. And it's not just Iceland that's getting in on the action. Tech billionaire Elon Musk has offered a $100 million prize for the best carbon capture technology. And Bill Gates has invested in a Canadian company with plans to capture a million tons of CO2 each year, the equivalent of 40 million trees. Right now, the big drawback of direct air capture is the cost. Removing just one ton of carbon costs anywhere from $500 to $800. And considering the U.S. alone emits about 5.1 billion tons each year, it adds up pretty quickly. Back in Iceland, supporters like environmentalist Andre Snær Magnusson say putting too much focus on the price tag is a mistake. So this... Uh Direct air capture is, of course, expensive now, like the first phones and, uh, and, and like the first cars or first everything. Of course, this will scale up, and we've seen the prices go down. Getting the right people involved is key. I think there are going to be a lot more, you know, of these meaningful green tech jobs in the future. So, uh, and they will be high-quality jobs. Astrophysicist Corey Helgeson left a position at NASA in the U.S. to work at CarbFix. I'm working on this solution. I'm going to give it all I can. You know, if things turn sour in the future, I can say to my children, look, I really tried. We did everything. Sorry it went that way. Iceland has such a unique geography and such unique resources. Is direct air capture something that can work elsewhere? There's quite a lot of, of the surface of the Earth that has basalt that, uh, that can take this. Lots of the sea floor can take it. I would say if, if somebody was young today. Direct air capture is maybe at the same place as the Google people were when I was 18. You know, so it's like something that almost doesn't exist. But uh, this has to become almost as big as the energy industries. But basically, this thinking of drawing down will be one of the main kind of jobs of the future. Still, even supporters admit direct air capture is not a silver bullet and that to fix climate change, we've got to stop emitting so much CO2 in the first place. But it's one tool that could be a step in the right direction. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.